On Thursday, February 11, 2021, Alaji Latif Jakunde, the first elected governor of Lagos and perhaps the last of the progressives, died. He was 91. His passing elicited a lot of goodwill messages from Nigerians from various walks of life, eulogizing him for the life that he lived, most especially his incredible achievements while in office. Latif Jakonde was governor of Lagos State from 1st of October 1979 to 13 December 1983. But before then, back in 1956, he was the editor-in-chief of the Tribune newspaper owned by late chief Obafemi Awolo. This brought him closer to the older Awolo politically, and he even went to jail with him in 1962, when they were charged for treason by the Balewa government, alongside others like Enauro, Ikoko, Adebanjo, G.S. Taka and others. In 1964, while still serving his seven-year sentence in the maximum security prison at Kirikiri Apapa, he came to the conclusion that the time had come to put forward a reasoned case for the creation of a legal state. With the assistance of other friends outside the prison walls and while deliberately breaking prison regulations, he published a booklet in 1966 with the meaningful title of The Case for a Legal State. This booklet formed the basis of a memorandum submitted to a conference of young indigenous Lagosians that was summoned by the then administrator of Lagos, Major Mubolaji Johnson, in 1966 to deliberate on the place of Lagos in a future constitutional arrangement. This conference, among other things, decided that a Lagos state comprising the federal territory and the colony province of Western Nigeria should be created in a Nigerian federation. Latif Jakonde can hence be described as one of the founding fathers of Lagos State, which is quite interesting considering that his parents were originally from Umuaro in Kwara State. In 1979, Jakonde became the first elected governor of Lagos State by winning over 500,000 votes, which represented about 81.98% of the total votes cast. A landslide. On the back of his remarkable performance, he was re-elected for a second term in 1983, this time recording over 1 million votes, which was 90.99% of the total number of votes cast in the election, the highest winning margin by any Lagos governor so far. Only Babatunde Fashala has come close when he won his election in 2011 with an 81.03% margin. Jack Onde's illustrious strides as governor, however, ended abruptly in 1983 when Buhari and his gang of mutineering soldiers terminated the Second Republic in a coup plot in that year. Jack Onde was charged, prosecuted, and convicted of treason, although he was later pardoned. In 1995, he accepted the position of Minister of Works under the Sonia Abacha military regime, which earned him some criticism. He claimed that he had accepted the post under pressure from M.K. Abiola and some other progressive leaders. In a later interview, he said he had no regrets about the decision to serve. However, his association with Abacha handicapped his career in politics after the restoration of democracy in 1999. But despite this, no one, not even his most embittered political enemies, can deny the tangible impact of his four-year stewardship as governor in Lagos, such as his construction of the current Lagos State Secretariat which houses all the state ministries as well as a popular roundhouse, either to occupied by all subsequent governors of the state, the Lagos State House of Assembly complex which he constructed, the Lagos State Television, the Lagos Radio, Lagos State University, the general hospitals his government built in zones all over the state with assurance of free healthcare. The low-cost houses in Ijai, Dolphin, Okiafa, Abesson, Ikonri, Ipaja, Ekwe, Amuwo Dolphin, Suru Lere, and others. The Water Management Board and Waste Disposal Board established on 18th of August 1980. The Adinyan Water Works, which was built to increase water supply in the state to 18.16 million liters per day. The modernized and expanded Iju Water Works, which was first commissioned in 1915. This increased daily capacity from 159 million to 204 million liters per day. The Electricity Board for Rural Electrification with provision of street lights he established. The modernized, expanded and commissioned Onikon Stadium in 1982. His government's free education policy, 
which provided access to good education for millions of Lagos children. The over 22,000 classrooms is government constructed across Lagos. His government took over the ownership and financing of Lagos State Printing Corporation in July 1980. His government established the first Lagos Traffic Management Authority, Road Marshals. His government established small scale industries credit scheme which preceded the EcoBank. His government established Lasaco Insurance. He also started a metro line project to facilitate mass transit. A very visionary project if you ask me. The project was however altered by the military government of General Muhammadu Buhari in 1983. In summary, Alaji Latif Jakonde was a visionary leader who demonstrated through his personal example that governance is indeed not rocket science. He will forever be remembered by the millions of people whose life he touched with the quality of his governance and the people of Lagos at large.